say that you don't know where you're going until you know where you've been. Growing up in China, my grandparents and I were always close. But when I moved to the US when I was 10 with my, with my parents, it became harder to stay in touch. Not only did we live on opposite sides of the globe, we also lived in different worlds, worlds with different languages, values, and cultures. Uh, for instance, when I was so excited to be living on the lawn at the University of Virginia, my grandparents said, OK, Ichi, we're glad you're happy, but why do you want to go camping on a grassy field for a year? <laughs> because of these cultural and generational differences, Sometimes it felt like our conversations just had to revolve around mundane topics. In particular, they liked asking me, you know, what did you eat? Have you eaten yet? And how did you cook it? You know, I thought this just wasn't the most exciting conversation topic until I realized that they were onto something. Whatever our differences, we all know the joy of a home cooked meal and in sharing it with our friends and with our families. Food is the bridge that can connect our disparate worlds. Others, too, have realized this power of food to create connections. In 2012, the US State Department launched a culinary diplomacy project as a way of supplementing traditional diplomatic efforts. On launch night, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton noted that sharing a meal helps people transcend boundaries and create bridges in a way that nothing else can. And that's how I got my idea of using food as an instrument of reconnecting with my grandparents and learning more about my family history. So in the summer of 2013, I traveled to China to learn the recipes and the stories behind my family food traditions. I spent time with my grandparents, preparing meals that we would later enjoy with my uncles, aunts, and cousins. And through this experience, I gained so much more than the book of recipes and stories that I collected. I experienced firsthand just how powerful food can be in serving as an anchor for memories. My grandmother makes this rice porridge that I remember from my childhood. And I was delighted to find that even after all those years, it still tastes like a warm hug. Um, food can serve as a trigger for other less savory memories, too. I had never understood what my grandmother had against potatoes until learning about a period of very serious famines in which her family had nothing to eat except for potatoes, which later became sprouted potatoes, which then became rotten potatoes. The most powerful aspect of my journey has been cooking with my grandparents, because this was an opportunity for me to truly listen with patience and humility. In doing so, I learned stories about my grandparents that I just never had known. I loved learning about one of my grandmother's greatest joys. In 1956, she finally started first grade at the age of 13. Her family of poor rural farmers could not afford school until then, and she was so excited to learn. She was an excellent student and even managed to skip a grade. But unfortunately, she couldn't finish school before she turned 18 when she was forced out of school by the need to find a job. To this day, my grandmother's greatest regret in life is never having earned that diploma. My grandfather had a similar story he came from a poor family of rural farmers as well, and he was expected to work just to put food on the table. But despite the fact that he never had a chance of formal schooling, he became the self-taught expert of the village. He learned how to repair all sorts of farm equipment. He learned how to build furniture. He learned to play the traditional Chinese instrument, the arhu. And he even learned how to construct houses, which he did for his family and other families in the village. Even though my grandparents never had the privilege of completing formal schooling, they knew that knowledge empowers, and learning is the route of improved lives for their family and the world around them. So they were determined that their children would be educated. While this was easier said than done, Having three children in school meant that my grandparents had three fewer pairs of hands to help in the field, 
but three more sets of boarding school fees to pay. And because of this, they worked longer and harder than anyone else had to. And for my father's part, him, he and his siblings walked 10 miles every week just to go to school, even in the brutal winters of northeastern China, when the roads were covered in sheets of ice. But all, the sacrifices ultimately paid off, and in 1986, my father became the first person in the entire village to ever get a real four-year college degree. And in the years that followed, his siblings did the same. And today, they've gone on to become an MD, PhD, a doctorate of veterinary medicine, and a math teacher. For my family, education has been the route of improved lives and greater opportunities to serve those around us. Understanding this legacy is what continues to drive me to take responsibility for my education and to use it to help others who need it most. So through my journey, one of miles and morsels, I learned not only the, the history of my family, but gained a deeper appreciation for education that continues to guide my path in life. Through this experience, I learned that something as mundane as food can connect people across generations and across cultures. So I want to ask you, what can you learn if you took the time to share a meal with someone? Thank you. <laughs>